plagued night here in the swamp and doomsday trailer somehow have survived another day of my pointless useless existence here on this Tuesday night November 14th 2023 so you know I'm, I'm 64 fucking years old 64 fucking years old uh, and out there in the goddamn rain today, I'm, and you know, I'm working on this property uh, that I'm trying to flip and uh, sell to some clueless fucking moron uh, moving to Florida, moving to the coast of Florida, uh, you know, trying to get some other clueless moron to get on fucking board and move to Florida. Out there. Busting my fucking ass, the goddamn rain and the bugs and the dirt, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, like, Hamon, what the fuck, you know, what the fuck are you doing with your fucking life, just out here in the in, in the fucking woods? You know, planet eating. Uh, I've already driven some family of foxes out of their home. Uh, probably, uh, I, I don't know, I've probably smothered some goddamn endangered gopher tortoise, whatever uh, I, I, I'm doing out there. And, and I'm just thinking, you know, your life is completely fucking pointless. I mean, completely pointless. I. There is no point to my existence, and I'm thinking, you know, Jesus fucking Christ, man, what the fuck are you living for? Why are you going through the motion that I have many more fucking years, and I'm already shopping for another fucking piece of property to buy when I sell this one? So do I come on? And uh, not to doom scroll, but kind of, kind of to uh, avoid doom scrolling. But I peek in over here at uh, at medium.com, at medium.com, and there in, in the middle of all the usual boring ass blah the fuck blah doom and gloom about how fuck the planet is. I, uh, there's this article out of nowhere from this woman I have never heard from. I like her name. Mary Lou Heater. Mary Lou Heater, uh, describes herself as a doctor of nursing practice specializing in adult mental health, aging, and addictions. Uh, and I want to get to her article, Suicide Chronicles. That's a, uh, a whole nother rant. So after, after I finish this, I need to get over to Suicide Chronicles. But uh, the, this article that she was right that, that came out today titled as i age what am i living for passive passive suicidal ideation in older adults so we're going to learn about some passive suicidal ideation as opposed to active suicidal ideation Take it away, Mary Lou Heater. At age 20, I decided to die by my own hand. As a septuagenarian, I think that means she's in her 70s, I'm glad I'm still here. Not so my sister, mother, husband, some patients, and friends. 
they have voiced that at one point in their lives, it would be okay if they just did not wake up in the morning. Yes, a passive ideation to cease living. I never really knew what the uh, clinical term for simply wanting to go to fucking sleep tonight and just not wake up in the morning. This has been my, uh, you know, my my dream for how many years to, to pull a, uh, a Michael Dowd. Uh, you know, Michael Dowd figured out how to do it. Uh, go to sleep and don't fucking wake up. Is, is, is that that much to fucking ask? A passive ideation to cease living. Just yesterday, a young woman said she struggles daily to stay alive. I asked if she had a plan, you know, a plan to kill herself, which is technically known as active ideation. Active ideation. And she said, no, it would devastate my family. The 25-year-old described life as her problem and death as peace. There you go. Very smart 25. I don't meet many smart 25-year-olds, but at, at age 25, this young lady has figured out that life, life, is the problem. Okay. Uh, life is the problem and death is peace. I explained that when I was a little younger than she is now, I acted on my thoughts and obviously failed. And I was glad I did fail. Hopelessness eventually turned into her. Hopelessness eventually turned into her, turned into her, turned into her, turned into her, but more importantly, curiosity about life itself was born. I told her, now I'm afraid of what I would miss if I was not here. Yes, let me, uh, let me uh, just do a quick survey. This is what I would miss if I weren't here. This is what I would miss if I weren't here. Yes. Uh, where were we? I told her I'm afraid of what I would miss if I weren't here. I'm too curious you never know what tomorrow will bring. Well, let's see. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I think, is supposed to bring rain. Uh, it will probably bring some sort of insect sting. Probably uh, some sort of financial setback. Uh, I, no doubt. Uh, I, uh, tomorrow will be will bring dealing with clueless fucking morons in the goddamn express lane at the grocery store. Tomorrow will bring gassing up my gas sucking truck. Uh, tomorrow will bring dirt, grime. It will bring discomfort. It will uh, bring desolate loneliness. Uh, anyway, those are a few things that tomorrow will, will bring. So I do have some idea what tomorrow will bring. As trite as it might sound, life is full of surprises, and I don't want to miss out. Yeah, I got surprised yesterday. Uh, when a, a Monday morning, the first thing that happened on fucking Monday morning, I, uh, I had paid 20 fucking dollars for a, a gallon of chainsaw bar oil. 
I used, I filled one fucking chainsaw with it on Sunday. Look at the back of my truck yesterday morning to start off my Monday morning. And I don't know why I was surprised. I, I, I should not have been surprised that there was fucking chainsaw oil all over fucking everything where I guess I would forgotten to put the cap back on the bottle. Uh, anyone who knows me, I have a problem with putting caps on bottles. And uh, a $20 gallon of fucking... Uh, do, do you know how nasty chainsaw lube is? Uh, all over the fucking back of my truck, my fucking tools. Hadn't cleaned that fucking mess up yet. And that's the kind of surprises that I get uh, first thing on a fucking Monday morning. Yes, full of surprises that she doesn't want to miss out on. There is that, she replied. So, as we get older, let's get, get to the point, Mary Jane or Mary Lou, whatever the hell your name is. As we get older, what are we living for? This is uh, probably this question. Uh, I spend more time thinking about this question than uh, any other question question on the planet. <clears throat> Why this is on my, on my mind today is last night's dream starring my late sister Beth. It brought her front and center into my consciousness. Divorced, living alone, her daughter grown, she and my older sister Carol planned to share an apartment in their dotage. Don't you love that word, dotage? In their, uh, am I officially in my dotage now? I don't know. Maybe you have to be, I think maybe dotage begins at 65. And then in June 2012, Carol died unexpectedly um, of sepsis after a surgery. Beth messaged me with Carol gone, there was no longer a reason to live. She was 69. Was her life complete? Was she tired of living alone? Or just saw no future without her big sister? <clears throat> My good friend Mary and I last lunch on New Year's Eve in 2014. She told me her kids were grown and on their own. She had nothing left she really wanted to do in life, and she was ready to die. Smart woman. She was 58 years old. A healthy 55-year male patient echoed those very sentiments to me just last week, smart man. My mother, at 86, told me she had no regrets lived her life, and was ready to leave this earth. Although Beth, Mary, and my mother have all since died, none died by their own hand. No one had active suicidal ideation, which included a concrete plan with the intent to carry it out. The difference between I wouldn't be upset if I did not wake up tomorrow and I'm going to get a gun and shoot myself. They all passively preferred death over life. Passively preferred death over life. You know, it sounds like a smart group of people. A 2020 study published and BMC Geriatrics <clears throat> described a death wish phenomenon in older adults in terms of a completed life versus tired of life. So they, it, it, it was couched as an either or. I don't understand 
why it wasn't couched, couched as a both and, as a completed life and tired of life. Uh, I, I have done everything th that I wanted to complete in my life, uh, and, I'm, and I'm now tired of it. So anyway, I don't know, but for whatever reason, I guess both and wasn't a choice. Although, they acknowledged there were no clear definitions or operationalizations of these terms, they framed the research around healthy, you know, physically healthy older, men, older individuals who no longer wanted to live that had, in essence, reached a point of being done for whatever reason with their lives. The researchers included people 55 and older who expressed a desire to die in the absence of serious illness. Uh, so, you know, like, I guess if you have cancer, whatever, you weren't allowed to participate. They posed the, this question to potential subjects. Okay, here is the question at the root of all this in this study. These are people over the age of 55 not suffering from a debilitating physical illness. Quote, Do the qualifications seeing no future for yourself, longing for death while not being severely ill, apply to you at this moment. There you go. The study conclusions challenged a dominant theory that only healthy older adults over the age of 75 had passive suicidal ideation in the absence of a serious illness. A small, and it is small, I'm surprised it's this small, 1.25% of a representative sample of adults aged 55 and older, <coughs> a, a small but significant number reported a persistent death wish without being severely ill. So I'm a little bit confused. I, I, I would like a little more clarification. See, I don't think medium writers have editors. Like, if, if, if I was an editor, I, I'm a little bit unclear what the 1.25% of a representative sample of adults age 55 and older exactly is referring to. If she's saying that is the percentage of respondents who uh, said they had a persistent death wish without being severely ill. At 20, I found myself in an untenable position from which I saw no escape. Since then, I admit a few times I have toyed with the passive idea again of ending my life especially after the death of my husband, wanting to join him, which past studies have shown is not an uncommon grief reaction after a long, successful marriage. Well, I certainly don't know what that's talking about. And, yes, there are days when I am tired of the sameness of my days, but I cannot embrace the idea that my life has already reached a successful conclusion, and then she answers the question, obviously, that, that I was wondering the whole time. She must have read my mind. No, I do not have children or grandchildren. Hallelujah, lady. You do not have children or grandchildren. Good for you. I live alone and have completed most goals I set for myself over the years. 
I am healthy, and I sometimes question what's next. But as I told the 25-year-old woman, I really suffer from FOMO, fear of missing out. I don't want to miss anything. I want to be a live witness to the future. Uh, I Obviously, uh, Mary Lou Heater is not a doomer. Okay, well, she's in her 70s, so, you know, maybe her future, uh, she wants to be a live witness to the future. Sometimes my surviving sister and I muse when we hear of some future event and wonder if we will still be alive then like the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics, the NASA planned human space flight to Mars. This is a 70-something woman wondering if she is going to witness humans uh, on Mars or even a former president ever lands in prison I'm too nosy to give up now. Although curiosity killed the cat, I'm glad I was a I was born a human this time out. I am curious, there's that word again, about the thoughts of readers as their reason to continue living as they reach advanced age. Will you reach a point in the absence of serious illness or disability, when you think, I am done, well, uh, we have 58 uh, old farts, uh, I guess, <clears throat> weighing in on this. Uh, here is Tom. At 66, I am finally not living for anything. I have neither plan nor purpose. I could not care less what happens tomorrow. Yep. Uh, here is Todd. Uh, I am 63, he's a year younger than me, and survived several suicide attempts a decade ago. I really wanted to die the past couple of years. I get no joy from people anymore. Society disgusts me. The endless wars, the filthy rich, ignorant MAGA lunatic, etc., Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here is Mel. I have never been able to answer the question, what am I living for? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh... Here is Gary. I am 62. I have spent most of my life, my life being stressed out, anxious, scared, worried about my finances, about my career, about my relationships, about my children, about the climate, about the government. It's been freaking exhausting. And we're going to read one more by this fellow. You might remember this guy, although uh, we haven't. I, I guess he's disappeared off YouTube for a, the time being, hopefully forever. Some dude named Sam Mitchell from some uh, place called Collapse Chronicles. This is what Sam... I uh, had to say about this article. I am a 64-year-old boomer 
and a doomer. I am in excellent physical health for my age. The only huh, the only huh, the only huh hope I cl cling to at this point is that I will die peacefully in my sleep tonight and just never wake up. As the Dylan line says, I am an old man with broken teeth, stranded and without love. I have given up all her. Huh. I have given up all her huh, 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 hope of ever finding a companion, you know, meaning a female human companion, not counting a male canine companion. You know what I'm talking about. I have given up uh, ever uh, finding a companion to share my golden years. Life is lonely, depressing, and utterly pointless. I have done everything I want to do with my life, and from this point forward, all is spinning my wheels as I grow weaker and more feeble with each passing year. The greatest decision I ever made was not bringing another human onto this doomed planet. The only reason I have not taken myself out is because of my fear of reincarnation and the statistically average chance that I would be born as a rag picker in Sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> I am writing this from what should be a condemned, essentially uninhabitable, beat-up old trailer at the end of a rutted-out dirt road in a swamp in Florida. But the rain does sound nice, and miraculously, the roof is not leaking, so I guess all is not lost, at least as soon as I pour another shot of tequila to get through another night. And that is Sam Mitchell's uh, and I have to say, I don't uh, always agree with that guy with that little eco pussy. But, uh, sounds pretty good to me. Sounds about right. He and I, I guess, do agree on the absolute pointlessness of existence. But now that I've gotten that off my chest, me and my little companion... I guess are going to go over to uh, Netflix. What do you want to watch on Netflix? Do you want to watch chipmunk movies on Netflix? Get out there and enjoy your own pointless, useless existence and your passive suicidal ideation well, you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, little companion.